There is an endless supply of to-do list apps out there, but you can safely ignore almost all of them. Most of them are not even worth your time just checking them out. There's only six apps that you need to consider. And I'll tell you which six apps those are, and I'll help you choose between them. I know what I'm talking about because it's literally my business to help people choose the right to-do app for them and to learn how to use it and incorporate it into their life. So let's go, but just a quick note, I'm talking about managing your to-dos, not necessarily your team's to-dos. Some of these apps do have collaborative features, but we'll just consider that a bonus. App number one is Things 3. This is the best overall to-do app. It's my favorite. It's the app that I use myself. Quick note, Things is only only available on Apple devices. Things is good because it is extremely polished, extremely easy to use, yet has all the features that you need. Things makes it very easy to capture to-dos on your Mac, on your iPad, on your iPhone. It's quick and it's also really easy to organize your to-dos. Organizing is really intuitive in things because it has areas as well as projects. Areas are high level parts of your life, home, work, health, your side hustle. And you can put tasks right in there. And you can also create projects like a certain report that you're working on or a house that you're designing if you're an architect or a trip that you're going on. This is intuitive and very easy to use. Things also makes it really easy to plan ahead because it has two different types of dates. One asks, what is the hard deadline? Filing your taxes, hard deadline, April 15th. But you should probably start a little bit earlier. So in things you can say, this has to be done by April 15th, but I'm gonna start working on it earlier to help you anticipate deadlines and have less stress. There's a couple limitations to things aside from it only being available on Apple devices though. Things does not support location-based reminders. So I sometimes like to say, when I get to the gym, remind me to do a certain stretching exercise. Unfortunately in things, that's not an option. Things also does not let you change the font size. This is a bit of a quirky limitation, but but if your eyesight is not amazing, it can be difficult to see the text in things and there's no way to make it bigger. And finally, in things, you can only attach text to a to-do. You cannot attach photos or files or voice notes and that can be quite frustrating. Still overall, things is by far the best to-do app and the one that I recommend for most people. App number two is Todoist. This is the best cross-platform app. And it's where I suggest you start if you don't use Apple devices only. Todoist makes it so easy to capture your tasks. For example, using natural language recognition. Hey, send that report to Mark on Friday. Friday gets recognized automatically and this task gets scheduled for Friday. Or every Tuesday, remind me to do such and such, which will create a repeating task that recurs every Tuesday. Super, super handy, so you don't need to dig into the settings to set that up. You can also attach anything you like to tasks in Todoist, such as photos, files, or voice notes. Todoist has great extensions. For example, there's a Todoist extension for Google Chrome. There's also one for Gmail and one for Outlook, so you can create tasks directly from websites or emails, very handy. It's super easy to browse your tasks in different ways inside Todoist, so you can create projects and sub-projects. Projects can have headings, but you can also display projects as Kanban boards. So for example, something can go from an idea to in progress to ready for review and so on. You can also create custom views to only see a segment of your task that meet certain criteria, that can be really helpful. You can use labels, which are basically like tags. A lot of different ways to organize your tasks in Todoist. Planning ahead is also really easy because Todoist has a great integration with your calendar, with Google Calendar, or also with my favorite calendar app, which is only available for the Mac, which is Fantastical. So what you can do is you can time block. So say I'm gonna work on this task from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. and that other task from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Super handy and that'll synchronize both ways between your calendar and Todoist. Todoist also has a built-in priority levels feature. So you can say, hey, these are the tasks that I wanna work on today, but these ones are priority one, these ones are priority two, and so on. And it'll automatically sort your tasks in that way. Now, a big limitation of Todoist is that it only has one type of date. So unfortunately in Todoist, if you say send Mark the report on Friday, that's called the due date on Friday. But what if you wanna tell yourself, well, I'm planning to do this on Wednesday, but the hard deadline is on Friday. Unfortunately, you're going to have to hack that functionality together, it's not built in. A bonus of using Todoist though, is you can share tasks with others, you can collaborate. So if you have like a small team, you can assign a task to someone else in the team and they can assign tasks to you. The third app you should consider is OmniFocus, which is the most advanced to-do 
that. Now, OmniFocus is only available for Apple devices, so that's good to know right up front. What makes OmniFocus a strong contender? It's extremely customizable. And if you're someone who has an enormous amount of projects all at the same time and long running projects as well, OmniFocus might really make sense for you. OmniFocus lets you organize your projects into different folders and subfolders. It lets you create custom perspectives, custom views to slice and dice your data in different ways. Even projects themselves have so many settings. For example, a project can be just a collection of actions, not really a project at all, just things that relate to each other. Or you can make a project a sequential project, which is saying, hey, this is a project where it's very important that I first do this and then do that, then work on to that next thing. And that allows you to hide tasks that you cannot currently work on. It's really built on the getting things done GTD philosophy around next actions. What is the next action that I can take? OmniFocus also has a built-in review system, which is very nice. So you can say, I wanna review this project every week, or every two weeks or four weeks. And you'll say, hey, you haven't looked at this project in a while. Is it still active? Is it inactive? Do you need to change some things about the task list? Have you already completed some stuff? Super handy for maintaining your system. OmniFocus also has a really nice focus mode that lets you say, I only wanna see things related to this project or this group of projects. Don't show me anything else. That can be really handy if you're at work, don't show all my home tasks. And if you're at home, don't show any of my work tasks. Some limitations to OmniFocus though. Now there's one big one, which is that the interface is pretty outdated. It feels clunky. It's like manipulating a database. For some of you, if you have like a software development background, that's gonna be very intuitive. For other people, that's gonna be a bummer. And you're gonna feel like other apps are smoother to work with. Also planning ahead is a bit tricky in OmniFocus. You have defer dates and due dates. You can't really say very easily, hey, I would like to work on this task on Tuesday. There's a way to hack around that. And in fact, I have a whole course on OmniFocus showing you how to do that, but it is a bit of a hack and it doesn't come out of the box. Still, OmniFocus is very advanced and great for many people. The fourth app to consider is Apple's Reminders app. Of course, that only works on Apple devices, although there is a web interface at iCloud.com, but it's pretty limited. If you like to use apps that come with your iPhone, iPad, Mac, Reminders might be a great choice for you. Reminders is surprisingly powerful. It's really easy to capture tasks with Siri, with widgets, or just directly through the app. And you can use natural language recognition, even to do repeating to-dos inside Reminders. Reminders also lets you organize your tasks in many cool ways. You can create lists, you can group lists, and you can create tags to organize your tasks. And then you can create smart lists using combinations of those things. So you can say, show me all of the tasks in this list that match certain criteria. For example, you can create a nice today view where you're saying, I want to see all the tasks that I'm planning to work on today. Let's say those are the flagged ones and all the tasks that are due today that have a due date set to today. You kind of have to hack that together, but it works. And in fact, I have a really great video right here on my YouTube channel that you can go watch where I show you how to set that up. And there's also a built-in templates feature inside Reminder. So if there's lists that you use often, like a packing list, or for example, the steps to produce a YouTube video is one that I might use. You can turn those into templates and refine your templates over time, save yourself a lot of time and do more consistent work. Now there's one weird limitation in Reminders is that there is no integration with the calendar app on your phone and on your Mac. So you might think that there is, but unfortunately that does not exist. One nice little bonus of using the Reminders app though, is that if you have friends or family who also use Apple devices, it's really easy to share tasks or even entire lists with them. The fifth app to consider is ClickUp. While it's primarily aimed at teams, it can still be excellent for your own use without a team if you really want a robust app that has all of the task management features. ClickUp lets you create multiple spaces, perhaps for different work projects that you have or for your side hustle versus your main job versus other things you've got going on. You can create dashboards. You can attach whatever you like, files, voice notes, etc., to individual to-dos. You can create custom databases and tables so you can track more information than just what is the name of this to-do and is it done or not. You can have start dates. You can have due dates. You can assign tasks to other people. You can make tasks dependent on each other. So you can say, this task I cannot start until I first finish that other task. So those dependencies can be really powerful. And then you can create a custom view showing you, hey, what is blocking all these other things that I've got going on? There's also automations inside ClickUp. So you can say, once this happens, do that. Hey, when Sarah says, you know, she checks off the box that she wrote the first draft of a blog post, create a task for me to review the first draft of the blog post. So ClickUp is 
incredibly powerful. Unfortunately, that's also its main limitation. ClickUp might be great if you feel very comfortable with that, but it's also very easy for you to get lost in setting it up. But if you feel very comfortable creating your own databases, tables, etc., and you really like to tinker with your own to-do system, ClickUp can be a great choice, especially if you're working with other people already or you're planning to work with other people in the future so you can onboard them all into your ClickUp. Now, the sixth and final app to consider is Notion, which is not really a to-do app, but instead it's a all-in-one solution. I'm including it on this list because I know that many of you like the idea of having everything together in one app. Normally, I recommend using a dedicated to do that. But if you say, no, Peter, I definitely want all of my notes, my to do's, my documents, and so on inside one app, then you can create a really good to do list system in Notion. Some of the nice things about Notion is that you can capture lots of stuff related to your to do's. So your to do can have a whole page attached to it with images in it, with links to other pages, with a wiki inside of it, a table inside of it. And you can organize those into projects and you can refer to all your project files that might also live inside Notion. You can make a list of all of your goals and connect your action steps to your goals inside Notion. So you can really create a sort of headquarters, a dashboard for your entire life inside Notion. And that is one of the big strengths of using Notion, but it's immediately also one of the drawbacks. If you're the kind of person who tends to get lost in tinkering with stuff, or if you quickly feel overwhelmed by having to set stuff up, Notion might just be too much for you. And you might be better off with a dedicated to-do app. But hey, if you want everything together and you like to customize things to a really solid degree, Notion might be great for you. As a nice little bonus, there are so many amazing Notion templates out there and people making lots of great content about Notion. I have a video myself on how to set up your to-dos in Notion, and I have a template that I really want you to use if you do go with Notion. But so there's a lot of stuff that exists out there already, so you don't have to start from scratch. Now, you might have noticed that I didn't comment on the pricing for any of these six apps. That's because I can't decide for you whether a certain app is worth it. The only thing I'll say is that it can be worth a lot to be more organized and more productive. So which of these six apps should you go with? If you're using all Apple devices, start with Things 3. If you're not, start with Todoist. But whichever app you choose, I want you to do three things. First of all, learn how to set it up and use it properly. Second of all, every week, review everything that's in your task list and make sure that it's still up to date. And third, give it a good go. Don't just use the app for a few hours, but use it for a week or two to really get a good feeling for it. Now, if you're going with Things or OmniFocus, I have courses to teach you all about how to set those apps up and how to be more organized and productive with them. If you're gonna use Notion or Todoist or Apple Reminders, I have videos right here on my YouTube channel showing you how to set those up. And hey, who knows, maybe by the time you're watching this, I'll have some courses available for those as well. All right, thanks for watching. Hope this was useful. Please let me know what you thought in the comments below. Hit that like button on your way out. And if you wanna see more of this, subscribe to the channel. Have a great day, see you next time. Bye-bye.